And now, our original docudrama, Black Hawk's War. Far up the Mississippi River, in what the white man calls Illinois Territory, is a village of the Sauconoc people. Chief Keokuk stands a solemn moderator between his war chief, Black Hawk, and the U.S. Army General, Gaines. This is an invasion of state. And you are the invaders. Uh, Sauk and Fox leaders ceded this land by treaty in 1804. They had no authority from the tribal councils to do so. Yet you acknowledged that document in a peace treaty following your rather misplaced allegiance during the War of 1812. Uh, This is your surrender, isn't it? (laughs) You... Black Hawk, Brigadier General of the British Army, will cease all hostilities towards the United States. Your signature? Mm. And down here, this provision, you also agree to uphold the Treaty of 1804. There, no, no, there was no such provision before. (laughs) If you're not going to honor treaties, well, why do we even have them? Even your laws, General, forbid the desecrating of graves. This is the land where my ancestors are buried. To sell it would be the ultimate desecration. Nothing you have to offer could be worth the land where my ancestors sleep. <sighs> you dispute treaties. Your ancestors have signed... You dispute treaties you yourself have signed. Do you also dispute the new treaty your chief Keokuk signed with our Indian commissioner? What? Or perhaps he is uh, not yet to tell you, huh? The Illinois Territory is now the possession of the United States. Over 26 Six million acres of Sauk, Fox, and Sioux lands east of the Mississippi, of which your village is parcel. Later, on the banks of the Mississippi River, Keokuk and Black Hawk look over the watery expanse toward what the white men call Iowa. You should go with the white man, Black Hawk. They like fighting as much as you do. And leave the fine home you forced upon our people? The west side of the river may be our winter hunting grounds, but the soil is just as good for corn. But this is hunting soil, and this is corn soil. What will the winter animals eat when the grassy fields under the snow have been overturned to harvest corn? They will go west, as we have. And this is certain? Did you sign a treaty with the animals as well? You made your deal, Black Hawk, when you took our best warriors from their home to wage the white man's war. Gone. While I was leading what was left of our people in another bloodbath against the Sioux. I'm well aware of our people's affection for you, Keokuk. It's unfortunate they don't realize I was fighting for their interests as much as you were. Is that what you've been fighting for? Asks the man who sold his ancestors. What trinkets did you receive for them? What garbage were they worth? Peace. We who have signed the treaty agreed that the white man's territory is neutral ground. And now it separates the Sioux from the Sauk. Generations of war between our tribes is over. Simply by crossing the great snake. Yes, I left our ancestors, but I left them sleeping well. You have dishonored them, Keokuk, whatever your intentions. There is no rest for them, and as such there will be no rest for me. The prophet White Cloud has promised me the support of the entire Ho-Chunk nation. I still have friends within British ranks, and that nation is also pledging support. Do not ask me for mine. No, Keokuk. I already know I will find no support from any politician. 
but the warriors will follow me. And we will win back the land of my birth that you have bargained away. But don't worry, we will sacrifice so that you will be able to make speeches and get fat on the summer corn. This is our nation now, Black Hawk. I have made it so because I tired of burying Indians. Here, put this knife in my heart, if you can offer our people something better. I, too, am tired of burying Indians. And I would be confused on which side to bury you. Black Hawk is able to assemble over a thousand followers, though most are old men, women, and children. He leads them to a Ho-Chunk village. Greetings, White Cloud. Welcome, Black Hawk. Well, where, where are your warriors? warriors? Your village is... Your village, White Cloud, is not a nation. No, I see you have brought that. So, Tia Cook was much dismayed so many chose to return to their homeland. But they are not returning. They're fighting for it. My warriors are here. Are they concealed behind the old women or the children? When you see them alongside your warriors, you will not be so glib. I suspect not. Step forth! Hmm. You've elected five division leaders. Good. Blackhawk, these five are the division. I did not have the authorization to enlist the entire Ho-Chunk nation to your cause. I can only offer my tribe. Them? Yes. And I'll join you. Oh, six of you! That brings me much relief now! I'm sorry. I will go to your tribal council and make my own petition. And you will be rebuked. I am Black Hawk, war chief of the Sokonok! They believe what you're doing is foolish. You should adhere to the treaty you signed. The white men make little effort to distinguish our nations as, as they distinguish their own. You, your impudence will be seen as our impudence. They believe you're foolish. You'll be rebuked. Go home, my friend. I am trying. Then six it shall be. Mm. We will follow this rock river to Winnebago County and meet up with Neopope. I was his commander during the white man's war, and he has secured British support for us. Yet, when Black Hawk arrives at the Winnebago village and meets with the British Colonel Lloyd... Are you mostly kidding? But the United States is your enemy! Uh, correction, they, they were the enemy... The British Army, the uh, British Empire, has no, no longer has the resources to wage war with the United States. We're friends now. I'm not asking to absorb their nation. I don't want their nation. I only want Sokonok. If the white man believes land should be possessed, then I want my people's village to be in our possession, not theirs. Nope, can't do it. Sorry. Of course not. Now that it's our fight. Uh... Have you forgotten that while you were fighting the Americans at frontier forts, uh, we burned Washington, uh, the whole capital, all of it, to the ground? Hmm? Did it matter? No, they, they still won, right? Rule Britannia. Yeah, all right. That's demoralizing more than anything. Because your ways of fighting are wasteful and confusing. You wear bright colors and stand in an open field in front of your enemy. We will show you how to fight. <laughs> you? <laughs> no, 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 it won't be necessary, I think so. Yeah. Centuries of British military tradition, oh, I think we've got it. But the United States fought like Indians during your first war with them. But, but not for the second one. You lost both. But I won't be a third. That night, the heartbroken Black Hawk wrings his hands, watching a fire with Neopope and White Cloud sitting beside him. I have been betrayed. We will find other support. Neopope, why did you tell me the British would support us when all you had only arranged was a meeting? I am a fool, I am a fool. 
I tell you again, Black Hawk, I stand beside you. As do I. And you promised more! Nations! Empires! All in the service of nobly defending a homeland from invaders. No. No one gives a damn about the Sock. Not even other Sock. We are without our ancestors and any true friend. My people, you have followed me, and I have failed you. We will follow the Rock River back to White Cloud's village and replenish our supplies. Then we will return to the lands Keokuk has set aside for us. Our home is gone. You should challenge Keokuk to be chief. What's the point, Neopope, if I cannot even inspire... What's wrong? White Cloud, there's smoke over your village. What? No. No, no, no! What is it? Well, it's not some damn smoke signal. Yeah! White Cloud, I'm so sorry. What have they done? What have they done? What have they done? What have those savages? What have those savages done? <laughs> I rode around three times. They left no survivors. All right, we will prepare the dead. What are the Ho Chunk burial rites? I, I don't know. I found this. It's a hat from the white man's army, isn't it? No, it's from one of their little armies. How many armies does their nation need? The Illinois State Militia. And they should answer for this crime. But they won't. In their journey back to Iowa, Black Hawk leads his followers along the Rock River, where they spot an Illinois militia man suddenly eager to catch up to his regiment. Commander Stillman! Commander Stillman! I will follow him and... No, no, he fears us. He so fears us he ran off without his horse. Swift Otter, take two warriors and bring him his horse as a show of good faith. The regiment will have an Indian who speaks the white man's language. Tell him we are hungry and want no conflict. We are returning to Keokuk as conscripted. Yes, Chief Blackhawk. To Blackhawk's damnable luck, Stillman's regiment has no translator, and his warriors are solemnly greeted by 270 tense militia men who don't speak their language. That's my horse, thieves! Stand your ground, soldier. He doesn't want his horse. Maybe it's sick. What are they jabbering on about? Little Chief, we are starving and wish to peacefully make our way to Keokuk. Speak English. What did he say? Where is the Indian I can talk to? Maybe he didn't hear you. We are starving and we wish to go in peace to Keokuk. He's yelling. It's some kind of battle cry. Draw your weapons. Wait, what are you doing? I am Commander Isaiah Stillman of the Illinois State Militia. Surrender, Black Hawk. We did not come to fight. The echo of the gunshot reverberates up the river. Black Hawk! I heard it. The little army's attacking! What is with these white men? We cannot live in peace. We cannot offer them peace. Shall I organize a retreat down the river? Black Hawk? Warriors! And so began the Black Hawk War. If I'm reading the militia's map correctly, I think this means an encampment, possibly a fort, where the rest of the regiment must have retreated to. 
We haven't the strength to take a fort near Pope. Our battles are best won on the terrain. Like today's. And what about after the battle? Our people weren't scrounging the white man's encampment for money or trinkets. They were scavenging for food. The militia's only going to regroup and follow us. Then we mustn't idle. I'll get the villagers moving. You help scavenge for any remaining food. Feed the warriors first and disperse whatever's left among the people. It will scarcely be enough to satisfy the journey to Keokuk. This army would sooner kill us than let us see Keokuk again. We will head north, back to your people in Winnebago County. And what if my nation is like White Cloud's nation and wants no part of your conflict? Then I will ask refuge of the Ojibwe. And if they refuse, then I shall ask the Kickapoo. I will ask the Potawatomi and the Ottawa and the Calumet. I will even ask the Sioux. And once every village of every nation has denied sanctuary to a people without a homeland, once they have denied food to the starving and comfort to those who have lost their ancestors, then I will lead my people into the guns of the United States. Over the next several months, Black Hawk and his band would gain other victories on their northern route toward the Michigan tribe, who had agreed to give them refuge. But Black Hawk's people would never reach that promised land. In what the white man calls Wisconsin, the United States Army, the Illinois State Militia, and their Indian allies ended the war. An armor-plated steamboat contributed to the massacre of hundreds of men, women, and children, many as they were retreating down the Mississippi River on rafts. Black Hawk, White Cloud, and others were held in federal prison for a few weeks, during which time they mostly posed for portraits. President Andrew Jackson, a vile and notorious Indian killer, did not execute the men. Instead, he sent them on a tour of United States to witness the grandeur of the American Empire. If it was meant to be a form of psychological torture... With the aid of an interpreter and journalist, Black Hawk released his autobiography, among the first Native Americans to do so. It became an immediate bestseller. He would live out the rest of his life with his family in what the, what, in what the white man calls Iowa. I was once a great warrior. I am now poor. Keokuk has been the cause of my present situation, but I do not attach blame to him. I am now old. I have looked upon the Mississippi since I have been a child. I love the great river. I have dwelt upon its banks from the time I was an infant. I look upon it now. I shake hands with you as it is my wish. I hope you are my friends. Today, across the land that he loved and sought to liberate, you will find statues of Black Hawk and his name given in tribute to towns, forests, and schools. The same United States military that murdered Black Hawk's people and scalped and looted their remains later paid tribute by naming a battleship, a helicopter, and an infantry battalion after the man they branded a terrorist. Frederick McLaughlin was a commander with the Black Hawk Division during World War I, when he went on to found a professional hockey team in Chicago, a city in the Illinois Territory, he chose the name of his battalion. Though the quote, Indian head logo, end quote, is treated respectfully by the hockey team, it bears no resemblance to the man who once waged war against the United States of America.
You were listening to our original docudrama, Black Hawk's War.